One thing that's really cool about this YouTube gig is the exchange of information. That's one of my favorite parts. So not only am I making videos trying to teach you guys the things that I've learned over the years, but you guys are able to comment and teach me things as well. And one of the things I've been hearing over and over is Ghost Piper. Why are you living in the Stone Age and still using metal lids? What's wrong with you? So I went and bought some pp5 plastic lids i actually did some research i bought three different kinds here i have them arranged in uh in order of price from lowest over here to highest and they each have some unique features that i'm going to go over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over the features and then i am going to drill some holes in them do some quarter inch holes and i'm going to set them up with some uh vented lids so basically I'm going to drill two quarter inch holes and I'm going to set them up with each one with an injection port and a filter disc. I'm using our self-adhesive uh, injection ports and filter discs from Micropose here. And uh, obviously there's a lot of options in terms of injection ports and filter discs. Um, a lot of people like to use the syringe filters and the pre-molded rubber injection ports. But uh, don't sleep on these, uh, these Micropose setups here these are proving to be very durable and i really like them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set each lid up with these and we're just going to do a run of grain and we're going to see how they perform so the first one i have here is just a really basic uh pp5 uh canning jar lid and uh, these came out to about 54 cents a piece got a 24 pack and these are just a really basic lid. Um, they are fairly rigid, although I can compress them a little bit. Um, just a basic plastic canning jar lid. And the next ones we got were these uh, leak proof lids from Ball. These came out to about a dollar seventy four per lid. And these are definitely more rigid. Can see I can't really squeeze these compress them as much they're definitely thicker plastic and one thing I like about these is I don't know if you guys can see it or not here I'll try to turn it there's a little lip in these right right there I'm hitting it with the tweezers right there there's a little lip and that's designed to kind of seal against the uh, the top of the jar and prevent more of a uh, you know a better seal more of a leak proof seal and my humidifier is kicking on and off because we have our oysters running over there so if you hear that noise that's what that is so anyway these look a little better quality and they have that lip there so those should seal a little nicer and the third are these mason tops tough top lids and these look really cool to me except they're quite a bit more expensive but uh, I think they're going to perform really well so they have this um, interesting lid shape here which makes it easier to get some torque when you're screwing them on and off um, as opposed to just a straight round lid flip these over they actually have a silicone seal that you can pull out but uh, it's made to seat right in a, a little channel here in the lid and I think that's going to give it's a it's a nice thick silicone seal and that's going to give us a a really good seal on top of the jar I think so I'm, I'm already kind of biased towards these I'm thinking these are going to be my favorite um, these Micropose injection ports and filter discs are self-adhesive so I'm also concerned with what the top of the lid looks like um, if you're doing, you know, a different setup, that may be, not be as much of a concern. Um, but uh, these have some sort of engraved letters on the top, these leak-proof lids. But I'm thinking I'll be able to sneak in, you know, one side or the other. I'll have to watch how I align my holes so I get maximum adhesion surface there. Um, the cheaper ones are basically just smooth all the way across. And the mason tops do have a little... Um, insignia there but uh, I'll easily be able to get a clean hole on either side of the middle and shouldn't have any problems with adhesion there but we're gonna 
drill some holes, stick them on, and uh, see how they perform. Have my quarter inch drill bit all mounted up here and just have a piece of scrap wood underneath these and we're going to drill some holes. Okay, so one trick that I learned too, anytime you're working with plastic is when you drill, this works for storage tubs too. Um, when you drill, you always end up with these little tabs, these little rough surfaces, and you gotta get those cleaned up before you uh, move ahead with your injection ports and your filter discs. So a good way to do that is with a uh, propane torch. You just hit them really quick. It'll kind of melt all those little burrs and stuff and just kind of smooth smooth your hole right out. So that's, I don't know if you can see that, but that smoothed that right out on that top surface. So now everything should stick. We have a nice smooth surface there. You could hit them underneath too as well if you wanted to, but it's not really necessary. One thing I do too before I put on these uh, self-adhesive deals is I just uh, wipe it down real quick with some rubbing alcohol just in case there's any oil there and we should be good to go. Run a wheat and uh, we'll do uh, six quart jars. See how they hold up. All right, so there's all six. There really wasn't a big difference in terms of uh, drilling them out, ease of drilling or anything. They're all about the same. And uh, I'm gonna leave them sit for about an hour for that adhesive to get nice and sticky on there. And then we're gonna fill them with grain. I'm really excited to see if uh, there's any difference in performance once we run them in the pressure cooker. Okay, so I decided I'm going to run seven jars instead of six. I got the old school metal lid here on the end for a control. But we got all of our other six jars filled up and capped off. Um, they all felt like they screwed down, tightened up nicely. Uh, none of them really felt like they were going to jump the threads or anything. With the mason tops, tough tops, you could feel that silicone gasket compressing a little bit. Just uh, felt like maybe a little better seal. But we got a nice run of wheat going here. We'll get some other winter grows going. Probably some lion's mane, maybe a noki. And we're going to throw these guys in the pressure cooker and let it rip. And as per my usual methods, all these jars are getting a nice tight foil lid for a swim cap for their bathe in the pressure cooker. We are back for our final assessment of our plastic lids that we tried out. And uh, I also have three jars topped off with our three different style lids with just some water in them. Because I wanted to test for any leaks or anything. Um, this is the tough top with the silicone disc. And none of them... This is our cheap PP5, and this is our gray leak-proof lid right here. So none of them really seem to leak visibly. Um, I did see a couple bubbles coming up on these two here, um, which means there's probably a little bit of water working into the threads. Um, so if you're going to do liquid culture, I would say go with these, spend the money and go with these Mason Tough Tops just because they have that uh, silicone gasket in them. And uh, that will definitely give you a really good seal and prevent leaking uh, when you're turning your jar upside down to pull syringes or leaning it over. Um, as far as the spawn run went, um, all of them colonized beautifully. So no issues at all. Um, I did shake these. And the mycelium is kind of recovering now, um, but uh, there's no signs of any contamination at all. The grain's looking good. Um, that's our enoki over there. Like I said, they're just starting to white up again after the shake. I wanted to do a, a shake in front of the flow hood 
just to uh, make sure they weren't going to let any contams in. And um, the lids still seem to be nice and tight. This is our Herichium. You can see some little white dots there, but again, they're recolonizing and, uh, you know, Herichium doesn't typically show much visible linear mycelium anyway during colonization. So to conclude, honestly, if you're going to do grain jars, um, I would just go with these cheap uh, PP5 lids. Um, here's the pack I got. BPA free unlined plastic mason jar lids and I got 24 of them they worked out to about 54 cents a piece and uh, they work great haven't had any issues um, our filter disc and injection port are adhering no problem and they seem to work great I'd say if you're going to do grain they're definitely my favorite but um, the only edge I would give to the mason tough top with that silicone gasket like I said is if you're going to do liquid culture so all in all, they all worked. Um, I didn't get any contamination, no lid failures or anything. But uh, there's no reason at that point to not go with cost uh, with these cheaper PP5 lids. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you have any uh, input, please uh, leave something in comments for me. If you have any experience with any of these uh, different lids, I would love to hear what you have to say.